Uh, this is Kenny Wallace here with Arkansas Voter Integrity Initiative. I'm just attended the hearings for the um, Joint Performance Review Committee that was held at 1 p.m. here in our Little Rock. I'm here with someone who attended the meeting and spoke uh, for a while. Sir, just state who you are and what brings you here. Sure. Hello, I'm Mike Gableman. I'm a former justice on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. I'm now practicing law in the state of Wisconsin. I'm here I'm here because my friend Clint Lancaster had been questioned many times by the committee and I decided to drive down from Wisconsin because this is such an important matter. It's an important matter because a majority of Americans have doubt about the security of our elections and a huge part of that doubt comes from machines. The, the voting machines that nobody Nobody understands how they work. And there's, there's such an orchestrated, it seems to be an orchestrated effort on the part of media and a part of so many established politicians to shut down any discussion of the voting machines. What we know about machines is bad enough. First of all, the United States is an outlier in using them. The, the vast majority of Western countries, the Western European countries, do not use voting machines because they mm -hmm. know how subject they are to fraud and abuse. And even failure. Their failure, and, and what's worse is we all fail. Every, everything fails. We all, people fail, cars mm -hmm. fail. But the key is to learn about where the failure is occurring so that we can fix it. Now with voting machines, that's not possible. There are two major corporations that, that own the vast majority uh, of the sales for machines, uh, ES&S and, mm -hmm. and Dominion. Mm -hmm. Now both of them refuse to allow anyone to know what the programming is, what the software, what the... what their programming is for actually counting ballots. And it's not like an old-fashioned machine that, that some teachers used to use a lot, a Scantron, mm -hmm. where you fill out the, the circles for your answers and then they run them through the Scantron and that just tabulates it. These voting machines do odd things that nobody would even think that voting machines do, which is to not take images of the ballot itself, but to take images only of the filled in pen marks. And then they don't count the marks. They somehow convert those pen marks into some kind of mathematical formula, which then is reconstituted to actually give a solid number, what they represent as the solid and honest number. Now, the one thing that, that people who, oh, but the voting machine manufacturers will not permit anybody, even the governments that buy these machines and pay big money to have them serviced, nobody's allowed to know how they work. None in the audits. They, they, Because I've mentioned before, they did some audits. I've actually attended one of those where I filmed the audit of the machine in the county, but it's not a real audit, is it? Well, that's my second point. But the, the first point is, Nobody is allowed to know how the machines work. And so unlike when a person fails or a car fails, we, we don't know where it goes wrong because we don't know how it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's no issue that we can work together on uh, to fix. The, the second important thing, it was so important, I can't remember. I mentioned audits before, I may have oh, thank of you. it. <laughs> thank you. What the machine manufacturers say and what the established politicians uh, who want to protect machines, and, and for some reason the media has fallen into line by taking a party line that anyone who even dares to question how machines work, which again, nobody knows how they work except the manufacturers, mm -hmm. including our government. They always say, well, there's a, there's a perfect way for you to test the accuracy of machines, and that's to do a, a, ball, a, a ballot audit, and where you compare the paper ballots to the results that have been reported by the machines. The fact is, in reality, that never happens. There are so many barriers to actually performing 
uh, an audit like that. Financial barriers, regulatory barriers, compressed time limits uh, in between the election and when people are supposed to take office. That almost never is it done that an entire state, for example, or even an entire county or even an entire precinct. I, I'm not aware. I, I'm not aware of any instances that any state has ever had a comprehensive audit to compare the paper ballots mm -hmm. with the with the results that have been reported by machines. I know in Arizona, following the 2020 election, they tried very hard to do it, but that was for Maricopa County. Maricopa now, granted, County. it's the largest county, but it wasn't statewide. They didn't even attempt a statewide uh, audit there. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to ask. What do you what would you like to see in Arkansas and during the legislature, uh, and with you know possible other ballot initiatives here in this state? I'm sorry, what? What kind of legislation or what kind of action would you like to see here in the state of Arkansas? Honestly, I, th I think it needs to be done in the same way I understand that unions, uh, unions have elections for companies where a union is seeking to establish itself. They count the ballots in public. The, mm -hmm. the paper ballots are put into a locked, a locked box and then they're counted before every, in front of everyone. So everyone can see as the ballots come out of the box. That is, that's the most common sense way to do it. That. That's the fairest way to do it. You notice you never hear the people who want to shut down discussion of machines. They never tell you why they believe the machines are accurate. The, the closest they'll come is to say, well, the clerks run a hundred ballots through mm -hmm. before voting, before the ballot counting is started for real. Any machine can be programmed uh, to run a hundred ballots. That does not, that certainly does not take into account interference that can occur when the machines are connected to the internet. And you and your viewers will remember very well that, that, all, that the two big manufacturers of machines, ES and S and Dominion, both told everybody that there's, that their machines are not connected to the internet and cannot be connected to the internet. We know that turned out to be untrue. We know that. And so what I don't understand is why there seems to be such a unified and organized opposition to the idea of paper ballots. And the, the committee that I just testified in front of Probably most members are acting in good faith, but I, I don't understand why all of these public resources are being used. Now, granted, I, as as two members of the committee pointed out, I'm not from Arkansas. And that's true, but I'm an American. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all Americans, and one of the founding principles of our country is that we have we have elections, free and fair and secure elections. Exactly. A majority of our fellow citizens, myself included, have very serious doubts about machines and all the members of the, of the committee are very smart. Why they're not using that intelligence and the resources of the taxpayers that they're using to find out who may have changed not signatures, not names, but as I understand it, addresses of petition circulators. When when no one is, petition circulators asking for paper ballots, why aren't they taking even a fraction of the money they're spending on that question, which I don't pers I don't believe is a violation of the law to be has to be, didn't be determined. It is to be, but. Why aren't they taking a fraction of that time and a fraction of that money to take a look at machines so that, mm -hmm. that they can tell us whether machines are trustworthy or whether we have repairs to make in our system? Exactly, exactly. Uh, Thank you so much. Happens, <laughs> until that happens, we're going to have a, continu a, a continuing majority of our fellow citizens who doubt the outcome of our elections, and that's not a recipe for a healthy democracy. I want to thank you for this opportunity uh, to talk with your listeners, and I want to thank everybody watching and listening for taking an interest in this. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.